Welcome back everyone for another week of BP Kids Online. We're so glad that you're able to join us this weekend. Hopefully you've been able to tune in over the last couple of weeks as we've been going through our new theme called Epic. This is our last week talking about this theme. Over the past month, we were talking about the Israelites and how they were freed from Egypt and they were on their way to the Promised Land. A man named Moses was leading them at first and when they finally reached the edge of the Promised Land, they decided that they weren't gonna trust God about going into the land. So then they had to wander in the wilderness for another 40 years. But then a man named Joshua, who God called to lead the Israelites after the 40 years of being in the wilderness, led them to the promised land. And that brings us to our story today. This month, we're learning about Epic and about what God did for the Israelites. In our own lives, God does special things for us and we want to remember those things. When I want to remember something special, I take a picture of that event because I remember that God did something special for my, in my life or for my family. But for the Israelites, they didn't have cameras back then. So how did they remember what God did for them? God used Joshua to lead the Israelites in our Bible story today into the promised land. And they were able to set up a special memorial, a thing to help them remember what God had done for them. Our big idea today is I can remember what God has done for us. Hey kids, today our Bible story is gonna be found in Joshua in chapters three and four. So as Pastor Ann had said, we've been learning a lot about the Israelites. And last week we learned how Joshua was actually the leader of the Israelites. So in this Bible story that we're gonna be reading today, God wanted to use Joshua to take over the promised lands for the Israelites. And by doing this, they actually had to cross the Jordan River so that they could get to the promised lands. And some of the problems the Israelites encountered was how they were gonna cross the Jordan River safely but God gave them instructions and words of miracles so they, so they could do so safely. The Lord said to Joshua in verse eight that he should speak to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. He should tell them when they reach the edge of the Jordan River and to go into the water and stand there. So uh, the priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and they walked ahead of the Israelites and stood in the Jordan River. And when they got there, the river was overflowing, completely flooded. It became even harder to cross than it would regularly be. But they went in and it says in verse 16 that right away the water coming down the river stopped flowing. It piled up far away at a town called Adam near Zarethan. The water flowing down to the Dead Sea was completely cut off. So the people went across the Jordan River opposite Jericho. So the priests actually had to stop mid-river so that they could let the rest of the nations of Israel cross. And in Joshua 4 verse 1 to 3 it says, After the whole nation had gone across the Jordan River, the Lord spoke to Joshua. He said, Choose twelve men from among the people. Choose one from each tribe. Tell them to get twelve stones from the middle of the river. They must pick them up from right where the priests stood. They must carry the stones over with all of you, and they must put them down at the place where you will stay tonight. So one person from each tribe of Israel took a stone to be a reminder of the miracles that God had performed for them and all the amazing things that he had done. Mm -hmm. And in verse nine, it actually says that Joshua also piled up 12 stones in the middle of the river. He piled them right where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they're still there to this very day. It's really cool because each tribe actually had two stones. One was taken to the camp to be stacked up and one was taken to the river to be stacked in the middle of the river right where they stood. This is really cool because they used this as a memorial to remember all the amazing things that God had done and how they had gone across that river that day. This story is crazy. Imagine trying to get every single person in Calgary across the Bow River in the middle of a flood. It seems impossible, but God can do the impossible. God helped get all of the nations of Israel across the Jordan River, just as he did with Moses getting across the Red Sea with the Israelites. This is such a cool story and it's so crazy to think that all those people could get across. So this is a reminder of how we need to trust in him, how he can get us through anything and has the power to perform incredible miracles and do the unthinkable. Just like the Israelites of the 12 stones, we can remember all the amazing things that God has done for us. Our Bible verse this month is found in the book of Joshua, chapter one, verse nine. So grab your Bibles and read with me. 
Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God, and I will be with you wherever you go. Joshua had trust in God that he could do the impossible. Even when he went to scout out the promised land 40 years earlier, Joshua knew that God was going to give them the land that he promised. But there must have been a time when Joshua would have, even in that moment, doubted as he was entering the promised land 40 years later. God wanted Joshua to be encouraged by his words. Let's read it one more time. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you wherever you go. Although Joshua was told this by God, God wants you to know to be strong and brave, that God's going to be with you wherever you go. So this month, as maybe you're going out for the first time to ride your bike or going somewhere new that you haven't been in a long time, don't be afraid because God will be with you. Hey, Danica. Hey, Zuby. Do you like my rock? No. Why not? Because it's just a rock. It doesn't mean anything. It's just there. But what if I told you it was from Mars? Mars? That's pretty cool. Well, you see, kids, when you put meaning behind simple things, they become more valuable to us. Mm-hmm. Just like the 12 nations of Israel, they had the 12 different stones, and they used those as a memorial to remember all the amazing things that God had done for them. God did some crazy miracles that day. He actually let them walk on dry land across the sea. We made rocks to remember the amazing things that God has done in our lives. My rock represents the fact that God has helped me get into a good school and he's helped me get a good education. He's also helped me become more independent. Mm -hmm. And my rock, it says friends. And that's because I'm so grateful for the friends that God has put in my life. They really build me up and they call me higher and they want me to grow stronger in my relationship with Jesus. And I love them for that. So what does your rock say? We want to encourage you to go outside and find a stone or a rock, and then you can write or draw a picture of something that God has done for you. Something that you want to remember and something that can be a reminder for you of the amazing things and the awesome things that God does for us every day. So, what are you waiting for? Go get your rocks. <laughs> Well, we're so glad that you're able to join us this weekend for another week of BP Kids Online. Stay tuned because next week we have a brand new theme coming up. It's called Crossover. You aren't gonna wanna miss it. Also stay tuned this week for any more updates on your parents' emails because we have day camp coming up in a couple of weeks. So you're gonna wanna get registered for that. Check it out online so you can fill out that form and come and join us in July. Any more updates, you can check us out on Instagram at BP Kids, and we'll see you next time.